occasionally get a call out of the blue from someone who had either called uh, Peugeot or Citroën in New York City uh, or the French consulate wanting to know where to get Citroën parts uh, and both both the, uh, the home office of Citroën in New York and the French consulate would give them my number. So I, I would get a call out of the blue from someone I never knew before who was desperate for parts. Uh, so anyhow, uh, April of 94 was the big big year when I began to sell parts uh, and and at that point, I purchased all the all the new parts uh, from Dellinger Auto Sales, which is where a lot of those uh, factory parts went to. Since then, I've bought out numerous other parts inventories as they become available. But at this point in time, finding uh, stashes of original parts is almost unheard of. Um, uh, and again, around and at that time, the largest wholesale supplier. Uh, of Citroen parts is in the, on the west coast uh, and many of the parts could be sourced from that wholesaler cheaper than I could import them from Europe uh, and mainly that was because uh, he was buying in huge quantities there was a lot more Citroens on the west coast than there was in here uh, and back in those days I was selling mostly to people on the east side of the Mississippi River it's not the case anymore it's uh, North America is uh, pretty much I sell all over the country and to Europe. Um, and back then, Traction Avant parts were being purchased from directly from from France. Uh, that has changed because there's there's actually suppliers in other countries now that have better quality than some of the French. Uh, 1998, Dave will remember this. This is another big change for me. Uh, uh, he and I and, and uh, his wife and another couple went to the ICCCR in Belgium. And uh, after that time, I met some really, really good suppliers who were, uh, were willing to sell the United States. Um, and, uh, but it, uh, it wasn't common to get discount. I mean, I was, I was buying from them at the same price they were selling retail for. Uh, and nobody over there at that point was set up to do wholesale sales at, or to the United States. So it was uh, <clears throat> it was a challenge. Uh, shipping was very expensive. Uh, international shipping, uh, as we know it today, was I think in its infancy. Uh, customs clearance was a hit or miss thing. Um, and, uh, and I remember saying, I don't know what I'd do without a fax machine because all the orders were placed by fax. Uh, payment methods were, uh, were usually uh, very expensive, wire transfers. Uh, nobody even wanted to talk about a credit card or anything like that. Um, and uh, so now let, let's fast forward till today. Uh, and, and I can only tell from my personal experience, but I. I now purchase from multiple European suppliers, uh, almost exclusively. Uh, a couple of them actually have wholesale divisions that are basically selling to wholesale customers in Europe. Uh, and, and they finally recognize that if you're buying a part to resell it, you have to have a certain amount of profit margin, which uh, 40 years ago was unheard of. <laughs> uh, and, and even if they're not set up to do wholesale, most of them will allow a little bit of a discount. But it, it's still imperative to know the reputable suppliers because there's still uh, very, very substandard parts being sold by some and very high quality by others. Uh, of course, the, the other biggest change that I think all of you have seen uh, is uh, the internet. Uh, <laughs> Almost all my suppliers have databases that I can access through my computer, either over, uh, over their website or uh, with a direct connection. Um, almost all the orders are placed over the, over the web. Uh, <coughs> payment methods are much more user friendly. Um, and uh, so you avoid the surcharges for payment. Um, and it's actually, but it's still, and this has been from the very beginning in Europe, it's very, very necessary to cultivate and nurture a working relationship with the suppliers over there. Uh, 
and and that means that uh, no matter if you can all if you can do it all over the internet, uh, an occasional phone call to exchange pleasantries and discuss something is, uh, goes a long way with the people in Europe. Uh, the other big thing, and I, I think Dave will tell you that I do my best on this, is the uh, the changes in international shipping, and this has really, really changed just within the last couple of years. Uh, I've got multiple places right now where I can order something on Monday morning and I have it in my hands by Wednesday afternoon. Oh, yeah. uh, and in some instances, uh, and I can tell you one of them, I just ordered a turning headlight system for a DS21 and I got it here in my hands and I inspected everything to make sure it was all good. I reboxed it in a box smaller than I, I it came in here in two huge boxes. Uh, I reboxed it into one box and sent it to California, and it cost within about $25 for me to ship it to California as it cost me to get it here from Europe. But, but again, you have to know what companies to use and how to get around. Uh, like in that instance, it was shipped here in two boxes. Uh, two different days because if they would have shipped it all together, it would have probably set in customs for three weeks. But be, by being under a certain monetary threshold, they they know the secrets just like I do. So there's ways to make it more affordable. So anyhow, that's that's what I see about Citroen Quartz. What do I see about the future of it? Uh, if the values of these cars continue to go up the way they are, uh, parts availability, I think, is going to continue to be good, if not get better all the time. Uh, if the values start to drop or the interest drops in them, who knows what's going to happen. But in the, in the last, you think, five years, in the last five years, the amount of quality reproduction parts, especially for D models, has probably doubled. Yeah. And, uh, of course, the, the hardest parts to come by are still the ones that are USA spec or Canadian spec only. Side marker lights, uh, some of the switches. Uh, the other thing that is becoming uh, quite interesting is parts for fuel injected cars, the electronics for those, uh, and some of the newer cars like the CXs are, uh, some of the parts for those are getting very interesting also. So, does anybody have any questions? So, the, for the fuel injection, is it getting better or worse? Uh, for the, you know, that's a good question. Uh, fuel injection parts have not been easy to come by for a long time, and I don't see that changing. Uh, it would pay you to have a really good friend like Dale Martin, I don't think he's around here, who, who knows other fuel injected cars from that same era who can tell you what you can take from a Volvo or a Saab and modify to use on your Citroen. Uh, there are suppliers in Europe that have fuel injection parts listed, uh, and usually they're used parts, even, even the sensors and that kind of stuff. Uh, it's just, you know, the demand has not been there for people to start remaking them. So, so anyhow, uh, I'm not sure what time it is. Uh, all right, so we've got a little bit of time. We've, we've got scheduled for Paul and uh, Dave to uh, demonstrate their suspensions and and do a little craziness. Uh, if if you get a chance to take a look, uh, the the 1976 parts book is here, 75 parts book. If you want to look at that. Um, this was actually, someone actually purchased this at Red Dellinger's estate sale and recently uh, brought it to me. Uh, I don't know how many of you might have been there, but this was the very first uh, Citroen, Central Pennsylvania Citroen meet. Um, I'm not sure if it's got a date on it. Uh, but that was the first pig roast that Red Dellinger had at the dealership. Uh, it had to be in the uh, early 80s because I think the first year we came here was in uh, maybe 86. So Red hosted two pig roasts at his dealership. If you look at the pictures, you'll see that the, the cars are parked along the road in the dealership. 
Uh, he gave tech sessions, uh, had a really good time. Uh, and then uh, after two years there, Red moved out here when they started the import show. And I think as I had talked before, Red was real instrumental in trying to get Bill and Chip Miller to start an import show because there was nothing, literally nothing that catered to import cars back in those days. Uh, so once they started to have this import show, Red was very supportive of them. And we had pig roast here for a couple of years until the person who was in charge of the food vendors decided that if we were going to have a pig roast, we had to pay him 50% of the of the cost of the meal to be able to sell food here. That was the end of the pig roast. So we're glad to say that we're now visiting George on Saturday night. George is here. He's going to be our host tonight. We're really looking forward to it, George. All right, so anybody wants to take a look? These pictures uh, may be of interest to anyone. Uh, if you have an SM and you want to cringe a little bit, if you look real hard, you see a young Brad Noss on, a, on an English Nuffield tractor, which most people don't even know what it is, uh, crushing a couple SMs to take them to the scrapyard. Uh, there, there's a picture here. Uh, Ken and Polly Batch were longtime Citroen owners. Uh, there's a picture of the car when they were in an accident and was brought into our shop at Red's uh, in February the 10th of 1987. There's pictures of the finished car ready to be picked up uh, five weeks later, completely repaired and repainted and ready to go. Um, and then another sort of interesting set of pictures. Um, how many of you have heard of Lee Iacocca? Uh, may, maybe, maybe Peter knew it. I knew it. But anyhow, his cousin, his name was Albert M. Iacocca. His license plate number was AMI6. Okay. He he had Citroens for years. He owned a uh, he owned a hot dog shop franchise in Allentown, Pennsylvania, called Yakos. Y o c c o s. Uh, he's passed away a long time ago. But if you get to Allentown, get a hot dog at Yakos because they're really really good. But anyhow, the story behind Yakos was. His father opened a hot dog shop back probably in the 30s or 40s and most of the people who were immigrants who moved here couldn't say Iacocca and they basically it came out as Yakos and that's how the restaurant name came up. But anyhow, uh, he used to tell us his cousin was so mad because he didn't drive Fords but he drove Citroen that Lee Iacocca offered to give him cars for free. <laughs> and he didn't accept them. But this was his last DS that he owned. Um, he didn't set the parking brake well enough. It coasted down a hill into a tree. And again, there's the before and after pictures of the back end crushed clear up almost to the rear window. And then when the car went back out. So a uh, little bit of an idea of, of what we were doing back in those days at the dealership. Then I had a very nice man come up to me a little bit earlier today, um, and he wanted me to have this. This was the window sticker for an ID19 Super that was sold at Red Citroen Sales and Service in Edwards, Pennsylvania, which was uh, how what Red uh, Dellinger's dealership was called back in those days. Uh, suggested list price was 27.6910. Power steering added $97.83, uh, $86 for a rear seat heater, $14 for backup lights, $10 for four-way flashers, and $27.50 for a roof antenna and rear speaker. And, and they would have all been items that would have been put on probably at Citroen in New Jersey. Uh, but the, the total price was $3,083.93. Uh, and I have to look the serial number up. This is not dated, but it's got to be probably very early 60s, I think. But it was sort of interesting for him to bring that to me. I'll leave it here if anyone wants to look. It's very fragile, so be careful with it. So, all right, so that's everything I've got. 
make sure to stick around. I, I, uh, I'm going to let Paul and Dave decide where they want to put their cars. Um, if you want to, we can maybe get the able to move or we can put them in line right here. But you, you've, got about, you've got about 20 minutes to line them up and then we'll uh, start the next seminar. All right. All right.